I've been using Daiji Sho for a little while now, and I still absolutely love Friendend. In fact, I would say that it's still my go-to on all my Android devices. However, there's a lot going on on these menus, and sometimes people just want a more minimalistic look to it. And the one that just released is a really good alternative to something like that. It's really minimalistic. I love how it looks. Just simple, straight to the point. Let me hook it up and I'll show you how to get it set up on your device. <laughs> Head over to Google on your device and search for Titanius Launcher and it should pop up with the GitHub page here. Once you're on the GitHub page, just scroll down here until you see the releases just on the right side. Click on the latest one and it'll open it up. Then just scroll down a little bit until you see the APK. That's what we need to download to get it set up. Go ahead and click on that to start the download. This may take a little while, but once it's completed, it'll show up in our downloads folder on our device. I like using CX File Explorer as my file explorer on my Android devices. So on the main menu here, I'm just gonna load up the downloads tab. In the downloads page, we're gonna see the APK here. Just go ahead and click on that and it'll start the installation. If you haven't given your app some permissions to install from unknown sources, you might have to do that here as well. We can go ahead and directly open the launcher here. When you start up the launcher, you're gonna have to give it access to manage your files. Then just press the back button and proceed. The front end up here, you can see that there's really not that much on this menu. We don't even have any games selected or any systems. I've already pre-configured Game Boy, so that's the only reason this is showing up. Here's what the system menu looks like. Overall, I think it looks pretty good. We can also view details for the games in here. If we want to set any of these games as a favorite of ours, we can go ahead and press Y and then just set as favorite. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but overall it's a lot more simplified than Daichi Show. With the front end installed, we have to do a couple things before we can get our game library working. Unfortunately, this front end doesn't have a built-in scraper. That means that we're going to have to use Screen Scraper to scrape the data from all our ROMs. This will also generate gamedata.xml files for our ROM lists so they show up in the front end. I've already had Scraper set up beforehand, but there's a couple different things you definitely want to make sure to set up in here. Let me show you what I recommend changing so we can get this working properly. So what I've done here is I've pulled out my microSD card from my Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. I'm going to scrape the microSD card directly, not my game collection, on my computer. Alright, so the first thing that we need to do is to set the global root folder. This is going to be on our microSD card, so we're going to have to change that now. In any of the systems that you want to scrape, all you have to do is to change the drive letter to the location where your ROMs are stored. I hit the little browse button here, then I'm going to go to my F drive, which is my micro SD card. I'm going to scroll down to ROMs, then we're going to do the Dreamcast folder here. Once that's done, I have a couple other options that we need to select. We've already gone and logged in with our screen scraper account, so go to the game list folder. This should automatically be set up. You shouldn't have to change anything in here. Under the All Systems tab, this is where we're going to be able to change this stuff. Under the Game List, just make sure it says ROM Root Folder. This should be automatic, I think. In the Media tab, you can see here that we have the ROM Root Folder, Media, and then it's going to the Box 2D Front. So that's going to change depending on what you're downloading for it. What I usually recommend downloading is the Box 2D Front the wheel, a video, and a screenshot. If you want to save a little bit of storage space, you can also use normalized video. This is usually what's recommended. We don't have to change anything under the miscellaneous tab, so let's head over back to our systems. The first thing that we're going to download is Dreamcast, so I'm going to make sure that I have that correct folder selected. Since we have everything else set up, all we have to do now is run the scraper. Just hit the little play button in the bottom right corner and it should run. This may take a little while as screen scraper is somewhat slow. On my 3 Plus, I have Dreamcast, GameCube, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Genesis, N64, Nintendo DS, PSP, PS1, Saturn, and Super Nintendo. So I'm going to have to go through and scrape each one of these. I do have 3DS folder on here, but there's nothing in that folder. So I can just go ahead and delete that. So you don't have a heart attack when it finishes, just make sure to uncheck the sound switch at the top right corner. 
we finished scraping Dreamcast, so hit the check button and then go to the next one. I'm just going to go ahead and scrape the rest of my game systems. When I'm done this, we'll come back and take a look at what to do next. Now that I've finished scraping all the game data, I'm going to go ahead and unplug my microSD card and put it back into my device. Once you've scraped your game data, you should be able to see all your different systems in here now. We have all our games in here now, and everything is showing up correctly. However, it might not be linked properly, so let's try one of the games and see if it works. So that one automatically worked. Let's go back and see what it was set to. It's set to default, so by default it should automatically select the correct emulator, or the correct core. Let's try another system just to see if it was coincidence. Let's see if Dreamcast works. Yeah, Dreamcast works. Game Boy seems to work. Game Boy Advance seems to work. Game Boy Color automatically worked. I'll be shocked if GameCube automatically registers, but let's give it a try. Oh, okay. There we go. So yeah, it, uh, that one doesn't work. So we're going to have to change that in the settings menu. Let's see what it's set to. It's set to default. Oh, okay, so you can just go ahead and select Dolphin Emulator for the official, or then you have the MMJR one. I believe I have the MMJR one set up already, so I'm going to go ahead and try that one. No. Turns out I have the official Dolphin on this device, so that's probably why it didn't work. I've opened up GameCube to see if I can get it to work. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't get the GameCube ROMs to start at all. I've tried Default, Dolphin Emulator, and Dolphin MMJR, and for some reason it's not working. Let's try the other systems to see if those work. I also tried Nintendo DS here, and for some reason I can't get that one working either. ESP also gives the same error, so I can't run that either. Out of all the systems that I have on my device, I was able to get a few of them working. Dreamcast works, Game Boy works, Game Boy Advance worked, Game Boy Color worked, GameCube didn't work, N64 I couldn't get working, Nintendo DS didn't work, PSP didn't work, Genesis worked, Saturn didn't work, PlayStation worked, and Super Nintendo worked. That's a shame to see, but this is still really early in its development cycle, so I can see this thing getting a lot better from here on out. Let's take a closer look at the system menu just to see what kind of options we have available to us. Pressing start on our console brings up the system settings menu. From there we have a couple different options. We can refresh our game list. We can select our ROM location. This is going to have to be done before we do anything else. I've already gone ahead and selected the SD card with my ROMs game folder. You can add a new folder by pressing Y. In the systems collections, we can add new systems to our front end. Just go ahead down here and unselect anything that you don't want. We also have an emulators menu. And here we can change all the different cores or the standalone emulators that we're using. Now it's interesting because uh, for PSP, I did not have selected the standalone, so that might actually fix that. Dolphin was correctly selected though, so I'm not sure why that one wasn't working. In the UI settings menu, we have a couple different options. We can show hidden games, show game videos, we can mute the video. We also can download Daiji Show wallpaper packs. Let's try that. I like the electful one, so I'm going to try that one now. Oh, that's cool. Because it's full screen too, I think that looks better than Daiji Show. Very clean. It has a very clean UI. With the videos on, you can see the game playing in the background. That's kind of cool. Just from what I've seen so far, I would almost say that I like this better than Daiji Show. I know it's really early still and not every system is going to work, but it's really promising so far. This front end could definitely be one of the most popular front ends with a couple updates. If you're having any issues, just double check to make sure that your emulators are configured correctly. You also want to make sure to correctly select your ROM folders and make sure to refresh your game lists anytime you rescrape or add new ROMs. If one of your systems isn't working, there's a good chance that you just forgot to download your RetroArch core. Make sure to download all the RetroArch cores that you need first before trying to start up any of the games. If the core isn't downloaded, it will freeze the device momentarily until it automatically closed the non-responding application. But yeah, overall, I'm really impressed. This just came out of nowhere, and honestly, I'm surprised more people aren't using this. This is a really cool front end, and I'm really excited to see where it goes in a couple updates. 
Overall, what do you guys think of this new front end? Let me know in the comments below. Which one do you currently use the most? And are you willing to give this one a try? Or are you going to wait for a couple more updates? I think what I'm going to do right now is just leave this on my 3 Plus and then leave Daiji Show on my Flip. But yeah, um, I'm really excited to see where this goes. Make sure to let me know how you like it in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And as always, thanks for watching.